guys, it's Amy with Stamp Over the Heart. I am here to make a little card today with you on, I'm using two of the sets that are going to carry over into the new catalog. Yes, I'm not sure what the little lace, um, but I, I think it is. So first off, we're going to be using the Bloom and Grow, and we're going to be using a little lace, the dies that go with this. It's called a stitched lace. So that's the card we're going to make, and I can't wait to show it to you. It came out beautiful. I did get this idea from Eve, who has I love stamping.com, I believe. But anyway, I chose to change up her colors a little bit, and I made this fabulous card, and I just can't wait to show it to you. Um, if you see in the video, I have my cat Eva running around in the studio with me today, and Dr. Pepper, my little miniature white schnauzer. So. If you have a meow or a bark, or I stopped to start yelling at Eva, um, so sorry. She's uh, prancing around the room. She's trying to get in all the windows, so which is fine. It's the first time she's really been over here and loose, so we'll see how that goes. So anyway, let's get started to making this card. You're going to love it. It is beautiful. I'm going to take me off so you don't have to look at my ugly little mug. Um, oh, and I hope you're getting your new catalogs out, and you're loving them. They're going to be so much fun. Let's get the desktop off and go ahead and straight to this um, card that we're going to make here. All right. The card we're going to make is this one right here. Uh, I use this sentiment from Bloom and Grow. It says, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I have used this sentiment before, and since these sets are still going to carry over, I couldn't help myself. I love this set, and this, these florals on this card here are just great. I, I mean... They're beautiful. What, what can you say? And here's the inside of the card. I gave it a little love and touch. And since we have this lovely little embossed piece here, it carries over to the inside. So I gave it a little lace there as well. I'm going to show you how to set your die up so it will do the single sheet of lace, which is hard for some people to get figured out. So, all right. I'm going to leave these to set. I actually have two of them because um, I've done the video twice. So I, I made two. And the first video I did... It um, it had dual audio on it. I, I wasn't sure that I had to stop the audio and didn't realize it. So, anyway, thanks to my husband. He's wonderful and patient and kind. But he also tries to take over. And I love him for it, but I'm also trying to tell him I need to do it so I can figure it out. Anyway, I have everything cut out. I have random colored markers. We're going to use Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, Cherry Cobbler, Pool Party, and petal pink. Those are the colors we're going to use as the blends go. And then for our card stocks, we're going to need um, five and a quarter by, or five and, a, five and a half by four and a quarter of cherry cobbler. And we're going to use that piece. This is part of what I had coming out. We're going to use that piece to make our little pieces here, which I've saved time by doing this, but I will show you how to set up this particular die on your lace to make it work. You're also going to need a piece of Whisper White, and it's going to need to be four and a quarter by five and a half, or five and a quarter, four by five and a quarter. Okay, and then I've stamped the image here at the bottom. Um, one of my cards, I actually cut it out and popped it on top, so you could do it either way. I chose to stamp it here to save a little time. And I'm stamping all of this in Memento because I'm going to use the blends, and you don't want it to bleed and have that black bleed into it. I'm also using Whisper White for my sentiment. This is cut from the nested stitch dies that were bundled with the Free as a Bird, which was a very lovely set, and I think it's carrying over as well. Then we're going to have all these little extra pieces from Whisper White cardstock. Um, we're going to color those. These are just some random pieces I stamped and I punched out. Or, well, I, I cut out. We're also going to have a piece of... This is from the Parisian Blossoms DSP. It's 4x4, four four, so it's just a nice pretty square. And I chose the one with the words because the one Eva had was embossed with words, and I don't have that embossing folder, but I just love the way it looks. So I chose to do this one, and the back side is Pool Party. So that was my inspiration and my color choices for today is the Parisian Blossoms entire color DSP was Pool Party, Petal Pink, and Cherry Cobbler. So those were my color inspirations. 
We're also going to have a piece of pool party cut at 11 by five and a half, or 11 by four and a quarter, and it's scored at five and a half, so it folds to make a nice little card, and it will open this way. Okay. All right, let's get started. And what first we're going to do is we're going to color all of our little pieces parts. I'm going to color a few of them with you so you can see that, how I color. And then I'm going to pause it and we'll come right back to it and um, get to see how I put it together. All right, I'm going to do, let's see, pool party. Now my pool party dark has already been used up. <laughs> Since I don't have any pool party left, I'm going to show you how to use just the light to give it that light and dark feel so you can see some differences. I'm going to start by my center is going to be this Daffodil Delights and I'm just going to color in my center here and kind of go along with these little lines of the center here on this card. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to take my Pool Party Light and I'm going to take my brush because it's a big flower and I'm literally just going to brush all the way around and not going into that yellow but making sure that I get it in there. And then I'm just going to color the rest of the flower with the light pool party. Just color the whole thing. And just make sure you get enough color all over. You don't have to be heavy handed with the light all over because you want it to have some variations. Now I'm going to go back with my fine tip and I'm going to come in here and I'm literally just going to go around this flower because it's usually darker in the centers of your flowers. So I'm going to go around and around and around trying to pull some of that darker color out of this pool party and just layers and layers of this light color so it makes it dark. And then where it should be dark or where I want it to be dark, I'm going to go over and over and over in some of those areas so that we will have dark petal looking like shadows on our flower. So it's not going to be every single petal, but I definitely wanted to have some dark in certain spots. back over again and put some more of this in here. All right, and I don't know if you can tell, but as it dries up a little bit, you'll be able to see those color changes a little better. So there we go. You can see that it's got a little bit of dark and light. And if you wanted to, to add some more interest to it because it's only one shade, you could add your um, Wink Estella to it to give it a little shimmer as well. All right, so we're done with that one. Now let's go on to the petal pink. And you can color your with your blends several various ways. Some people like to go all dark, put all their dark down, and then go over it with the light. I'm going to show you how to do both and show you how it looks. I'm going to do this one with just my light first. I'm going to go over the whole thing with the light. And sometimes these flowers are hard to see where the flower is and the petals are and the leaves are. But I'm just going to color this whole flower with my brush stroke on all of these little flower petals. And we're just going to color the whole thing. That's done in light petal pink. Now I'm going to take the dark petal pink and I'm going to use my um, smaller end. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to darken my center of my flower. Just so it looks pretty dark in there. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to go and darken some of these edges where it would be dark. And really where you put the dark is up to you. So I think that's good because, you know, you don't have a whole lot of dark on these flowers because unless they're almost all the way open. There we go. And you can come back with your light petal pink over those to blend that dark in a little bit more. And it also kind of darkens it up just a bit. 
All right. And let you see that one a little closer so you can see the dark and the light petal pinks. And now we're going to do our red flower, which is cherry cobbler. And I'm going to do the dark first so you can see how that works out. Starting with my fine tip again. And I'm going to do just some of these little inside the centers. Really dark because, you know, most of your flowers are really dark in the middle. Because they haven't quite opened up all the way. And then a few little pieces on the outside. And this one is, a, I assume it's supposed to be a rose. And make it look like it's got a shadow on here. All right. I think that's good. And then I'm going to come back with my light cherry cobbler. Now for this one, because cherry cobbler is such a strong, strong color and it can bleed out, I tend to go with my smaller tip because it's a small area that I'm coloring. And then I even go over the dark cherry cobbler with this light so that it blends in and actually keeps it a little darker than my light cherry cobbler. And I'm going to go over the whole thing. And you can add a little lighter shadowing by just using the light in some other places. Like I've made this a little darker. But it's still a shade different compared to the dark. So it gives you several levels of shade on that cherry cobbler. I don't know if you can see. Let's turn this other light on. And see, There we go. That might help. It might be too much light. I don't know. Maybe it needs to come from the top. Anyway, here's this one. There you go. You might be able to see it better that way. And this is, forgive me because my... Technique is not perfected yet with this spot. I'm learning whether I need more light or not enough light. So if you would leave me a comment to tell me, hey, that was enough light or not enough light, that would be awesome. It will help out getting my videos better for you guys. Now the next part of this one is our leaves. And I'm going to use dark granny apple green. dark granny apple green on my leaves. Sorry about that. That was my mom. Hi, mom. I'll call you back in a few. Love you. And then most of you know, um, mom has been not feeling well. So we definitely have to call her back. All right. There's granny apple green, dark, and then we're going to come in with the rest of the light granny apple green on those. And that's all I do for my leaves. I don't do a whole lot of the leaves because you just want a little color. I want my flowers to stand out more than the leaves. And this is the front of our card. It's the piece that goes on the front of our card, which, you know, you want your flowers to stand out the most. All right, now you can see the flower, the leaves on this one. Oh, my hand's in the light, so there we go. See the flowers on that one and the leaves. Now I'm going to do just the dark petal pink on my little, uh, I don't know what these are, little pillows, little seed pods, buds. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to do petal pink just to add some interest, some other dimension and color. So this is the final piece or the final for our um, front of our card. So I'm gonna pause it here and I'll be back with you shortly after I get everything colored and we'll put it together. Okay, I've got everything colored now. So we've got our, our flower here for the inside, all nice and colored. Get a little better look, it's again, the pool party petal pink and cherry cobbler and notice how one of my my petal pinks it kind of uh did a little bit of a bleeding in the black with the memento i think i just had a fuzz or something that i, I don't know but it came up 
So we've got all of our pieces colored. Now we're going to assemble this wonderful card, and I'm going to show you the trick to getting this embossed just on the ends. All right, so I'm going to put all of this aside. First thing I'm going to do is take my card base, which is this piece. It's eight and a half or 11 by four and a quarter scored at five and a half. And I'm going to make sure that my, and I'm going to glue this on here in the middle, just like that. Okay. But before I do that, I'm going to put this little guy on. I need to show you how to do that. So if you want to take, you have a full sheet of this and you want to cut just out one of these. So you're going to have this full sheet and you're going to lay it down and you're going to take this piece that comes in your dies, uh, the stitched lace dies. And it, if you see on these, you're going to have circular sections of dots. That's what I use to line this up. So I'm going to line my circular sections up just so I can see them just like that. And you're going to line it up just like that. And I usually use a piece of washi tape to hold my um, blade down and I run it through the big shot. Now I never run it this way through. I always run it diagonally through like this. So I'll have it like that and I'll run it diagonally through or I'll run it vertically. Never run horizontally through your machine. Number one, your machine doesn't always cut that well, and you have better control if you're running it on one of the sides. So you do that on this side, and then you're going to turn around and do it again. You're going to do the line up the same way, so you're going to find your little rounded dots, and you're going to line the edges up again, and you're going to cut that out. So that will, in turn, give you this. Now with this piece, when I put it on my DSP here and I line it up, it is going to be too big. And that's fine. I will just snip it off so it's even. So let's get that put on. Let me get my glue out here. It was sitting up, so hopefully it'll work just fine. So I'm going to dot the edges and make sure all my little pieces are poked out first. Sometimes you have a few that don't come out very well. But it's not often that I have that problem with this particular die. It usually only takes one or two runs through on your piece of uh, cardstock. And I don't use anything special. Um, it goes right through. I have had no troubles with this die. And there's really not that many that did not come out on this. They all came out pretty well. And it's hard to see them unless you're looking really close at it. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to put some glue down. And I like to use the Tombow glue. Um, it just seems to hold better for me. And I'm not putting a whole lot on this. Because I'm only going to glue the top. So I want to make sure my, my words... Are vertical and I tend to keep this one for the top I'm going to keep it even with the center circles so that we only see it there we go so then I'm just going to let it dry up and I'm going to take a pair of snips and just snip this off so I'm going to go this way so I can get the edge of the paper And the same thing on the other side here. And there we go. So that gives us our lace on the edge. And now we can just adhere this onto our cardstock. Now I'm going to put this all the way up to the edge and center it at the top. There we 
I do it this way because I can't quite see the edge very well. to go to the top. There we go. Got it. Okay. Time of glue started drying on me. All right, so that's, I'm going to leave it just like that. Now, I know you're kind of wondering, so how did she get this down here? Remember, I didn't glue the whole thing down here. So I'm going to take my tin tile embossing folder. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to line it up just like this where I want my embossing to be. And I'm going to go just underneath the DSP here. Now you may get a little glue stuck on it and basically it lines up with just the first line of your tin tile. If you can see that a little better. Right like that. So now I'm going to go run this through the embossing fold or the big shot. I don't keep my big shot on my desk, but I do have good news. We're coming out with a new one that is going to be smaller, and I'll be able to keep it on my desk. Now, I think this moved on me in the um, big shot. See how it moved, and now it's not going to be straight. It's going to drive my little ADD self crazy. Now, remember I said you might have a little bit of glue stuck to it. That's okay. It will come right off. There we go. So now we've got this, and I can go back in and put some glue here if I want to keep this down. But it should work just fine, just like that. And you see it did move on me, so we've got that embossed feature. But because this is a sake of a video, we're going to let it roll. Okay, now we're going to have, we're going to need to stamp our sentiment here. That's what I like this map for. I don't need to have anything else. Here's my sentiment, and I'm using Cherry Cobbler ink. And I'm just going to center this right here towards the side. Center it up and down, but stamp it towards the side because your flowers are going to be on the side. And I'm letting that dry up a bit before I start fooling with it. Give me some dimensionals. I'm going to use two dimensionals on the, bottom, on the back of this. Okay, and I'm going to take our big piece that we have colored here, and I'm going to put this on here in the center, just like this. And again, I'm going to use Tombow. And you could put it there, or you can put it here. It depends on how you want, how you want to do it. But then I'm just going to put this down, make sure I've got it right where I want it. Leave it sit for a second. Then I can take my dimensionals off and place this in the center. Now mind you, because the glue has not dried, it's a little wiggly. But that's good. So I'm going to have to turn it this way so I can see what I'm doing. That's good. So now I can take all these little bitty pieces that I have cut out and I have colored and I can take and put these down. I'm going to take my little leaves, my extra leaves, and I'm going to put them down here, right there. And I'm going to take this bunch of flowers, and I'm going to put these right beside it, just like that. And I don't want this to stay down. I want it to stay up. There we go. And then I'm going to take this one. 
then I'm going to allow it to go right underneath and curl around the top of the card. And there's the front of your card. That's it. Very simple and sweet. Now we're going to do the inside. I've got this piece here, and I'm going to use a piece of sponge, and I'm going to use my cherry cobbler ink to give it another wow factor. Now we're just going to take this sponge, and we're literally going to color all the way around the edges. Now when I get down here on this side, I like to fill this bottom part up just to fill up that white, blank, empty space. There's your inside base for your sentiment. Literally, that's all you need to do for that one. Now, on the inside, you're going to glue this one here. I, again, use the Tombow just because I've had so many people say they love receiving cards from me, but they're falling apart. That's from using my um, glue gun. So I don't like that idea. I'm just going to lay this in center here in the center. I showed these to my mom. She's in love with them. She says, oh, that would be great. Can I have four? So I have three made. I'm going to need to make another one. Hopefully this video will work and I don't need to make another one for our video. And then I'm going to take this other piece that I caught out from my um, stitch dies. And I'm going to put this one. And I literally will just take and put some dots of glue. four little spots and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put it right over this edge right here on the edge of the embossing folder so that way it gives it a little di difference and I'm trying to keep it straight so it makes it look straight there we go and then if I need to just trim off any excess so you don't see it on the other side And you're done. That's it. There's your card. Now, on my first card, I did do a little bit of um, pool party sponging on top of this embossed piece on the inside and the outside. So that way you got um, a little difference. You can see it in this one right here. This one has the pool party compared to this one. There you go. Pool party on top, sponged, and this one does not have the pool party at all. All right, there you go. There's my cards, my lovely three cards. I hope you all have a wonderful, lovely, happy day. And please check back, subscribe to my videos. Um, that way I can actually get my own little uh, link and rename my YouTube channel. That would be awesome. Right now it's just AA Kindler Designs, which is awesome. But, you know, we would like to say Stampin' with a Heart. So, hope everybody stamps with a heart today and has a great day and happy Memorial Day. Let's give some thanks to all those soldiers who have died for our freedoms. You all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.